Uh, on this episode of NSFW, we go back to the future and experience a haunted pre-recorded episode because of scheduling conflicts. We deal with glee and a new way to go through life. I insult Michael Rooker and we discuss who would kill themselves first if the other one died. It's all coming up on a very haunted episode of NSFW. Seriously, we couldn't record it live and we apologize. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW for October 26, 2010, episode 47. Glee rhymes with Erminor. This episode of NSFW brought to you by Squarespace. Sign up for your free, no risk, two week trial and keep us in business by using promo code NSFW for 10% off the lifetime of your order. And it is now go time for NSFW, the new show full of wind, the new sauce for the Webernets. We should explain that it is all of what, two o'clock in the GD morning, right, Mr. Justin Robert Rubles, the first? Absolutely, we're 15 minutes off. Welcome everybody to a very special edition. Uh, it's super late and that's because we are recording this on a Thursday night, Friday morning, uh, not a Tuesday, and this is not live. There's no chat room. We have no games to play. We have no guest. It is just an, an uh, you By know, the way, a, a as unplug. you're saying this, we're not there at the moment, but as you're saying this, I'm picturing the scrolling of the chat room already all caps saying worst episode ever <laughs> it just has it it no up. shot no <laughs> shot but here here's here's the reason why it might be the worst episode ever but it could have been no episode at all because brian the man who is right now headlining halloween horror nights is about to enter what you've described to me as the busiest stretch of time the black you've ever hole. had in your professional life yes okay so while i'm at universal halloween horror nights we've got four to six shows per night, every night. Now, normally it's four nights a week. During peak times, it goes to five nights a week, four to six shows a night, but I do get two days off. Unfortunately, on those two days off, on Monday, I have to get up at 6 a.m. to fly out to Wisconsin for a show that night. The next morning, I have to get up at 4 a.m. in order to catch a flight to go down to Mississippi for a show on Tuesday. And then Wednesday, I get to get up at 6 a.m. to fly into Orlando, hit the airport, and drive immediately back to Universal to do four to six nights uh, or four to six shows a night every single night through the rest of the run. So uh, a little and, and bit. By busy. the way, this night at Halloween Horror Nights, or sorry, this week, Halloween week is. The week. It is when everybody comes to play and frolic at Halloween Horror Nights, which, by the way, I've been to now three nights or four nights, technically. I've been there, and it is insane. Everybody should go, especially watching this. If you're on the fence, I don't know. Maybe I should go. Maybe I shouldn't. No, no, no. You sell your house. You buy a beater <laughs> of a car. You drive it down, and you leave it in Orlando, and then you fly back afterwards. I have no idea why that has to be the plan, but I'm afraid you're going to have to leave your car in Orlando. Exactly. Reason. You want to know why? Because now we're running a chop shop. <laughs> that was the other announcement we have, is we have parlayed all of our money into That's a right. chop shop. You know what I want to do is I want to leverage our fan base where it's like we spend entire years building up this rabid, interested thing, and we tell them that it's like for, hey, here's a hilarious gag we can pull, and it turns out to be like just a masterful, full-on criminal enterprise. Maybe is, this would be how the Joker would really do it. Right? <laughs> the Joker. The Joker would really have a podcast, have a rabid fan base, and it would be like it'd be the same thing, dude. It'd be like Joker TV, right? Like you know, no, and, and he would. He would be. He'd be like, you know, it'd be a hilarious thing is if everyone showed up wearing Joker masks at this event <laughs> at this time, and then he freaking shoots Batman in the face, and then they're trying to find like, where's the Joker? But there's so many guys <laughs> in Joker masks. He's like, it worked. <laughs> There was a guy who did that. Did you hear about that? The guy that used Craigslist? No. There was a guy that robbed a bank. 
and and he showed up in biohazard outfit, like yellow with a rebreather no! and everything. So and the way he got away was he had spent previously, he said looking for, you know, pays two hundred dollars an hour for qualified hazmat professionals for this gig. And so he got like twenty or thirty people who were interested, and then he put in there like uh, like show up this time just yeah. outside the bank of america and i'll come pick you up and then so and so he goes in robs the effing bank walks out and then the police show up and they're like who was he and they're like well he had a yellow jumpsuit and a rebreather around his neck <laughs> and meanwhile there's 20 freaking guys there like it the guy got off he never got caught how I mean, amazing by the is way, that but hold on don't you know something's fishy when they're like all right i want only qualified professionals who will be there and then he's like, but by the way, you have to show up in your gear. Like, can't we put it on there and like we keep it in no, like no, no, a sealed? Uh, okay, hold on. I'm I'm gonna look this up. This case. is a, I'm gonna read to you the CNET the CNET article. Bank okay. robber. I gotta skip the ad here. Bank robber hires decoys on Craigslist. Fools uh, Craigslist. They don't, it only says Craigslist. It doesn't say lists. That's me. Yeah. It is 2 a.m. as we record this. Allow me to to point that out to everyone. Bank robber go. hires decoys on Craigslist. Fools cops. This took place in 2008, an elaborate robbery scheme that's one part the Thomas Crown Affair and one part Pineapple Express. A and crook... one part metaphor-laden lead, I guess. <laughs> a, a crook robbed an armored truck outside of Bank of America in Monroe, Washington, hiring decoys. It gets better. He then escaped in a creek headed for the Skykomish River in an inner tube, and the cops, the cops are still looking for him? Are you kidding me? But here's the hilarious twist. The robber had previously put out a Craigslist ad for road maintenance workers promising wages ah. of twenty eight fifty per hour. Recruits were asked to wear the, wait near the Bank of America right around the time of the robbery wearing yellow vests, safety goggles, a respirator mask, and preferably a blue shirt. At least a dozen of them showed up after responding to Craigslist. Ad. How See, awesome now, is that? That is brilliant. Because like hazmat qualified hazmat professionals, uh, I think they would probably know better. They would be like, <laughs> oh, I see. So you say you're like, I am like... not. I am not going to show up in my hazmat suit on the street of wherever of schmirk schmir schmir Washington. <laughs> Why is it every time you make up a word, it's always schmir schmigel schmarg? <laughs> because it always sounds like like I'm saying something backwards. Like, <laughs> So so just Did you ever do that? Did you ever actually like practice saying things backwards? I never did cuz I'm always good enough at faking it. No, no, apparently not because it's all schmigel schmark or whatever. But like I recorded <laughs> My life is a lie. <laughs> I can live you think you're life. good. You're not good at all, sir. <laughs> so, so like when I was in college and I had my, my 386, thank you very much, with 33 megahertz, what's what? Uh, and uh, in college, I, you know, you could record yourself and then play it backwards and stuff, yeah. which was very novel at the time. Sure. And I remember memorizing my own name backwards. And I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to say it now. And of course, the chat room will instantly, you know, reverse it, and there'll be a YouTube clip. And I so hope it sounds like schmirk schmirkle schmirk. <laughs> actually, you know what? It's actually pretty. If I remember correctly, and it's been it's been easily over a decade and a half since I did this. Sure. But I believe my name backwards. Brian Brushwood is. All right. That sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like like that sounds worse than Schmirk Schmiegel's <laughs> No, no, no. That's is Lurserp Yep. Lurserp Yep. No. Lurserp Yep. I mean, if you want, we could do it right now, or we could have the chat room do it. I know. I think this this is. I mean, this is the best thing about this show, right? Because this is like an acoustic <laughs> version. We normally we got our fat stacks. We got like we got pyrotechnics. Oh we got my God. We're like on surfboards, like acted oh, out. God, dude, I got a nun on a rig <laughs> shooting a Roman candle in a child's face with glowing eyes for no that, reason. <laughs> like, why are her eyes up, glowing? Bro. <laughs> and that's our stage show. But right now, we're in a tiny club. We're, we're right. We're, we're like this is like our Simon and Garfunkel. Show. We're like we're like Guar trying to do an acoustic oh, set. Your troubled waters. That's what's happening right now. <laughs> so we don't have any of our gimmicks to keep us afloat. We just got to no. do our thing. All right. Well, I the may chat room... may not put on a Jew for a wig. So start... <laughs> you, won't, you won't suddenly break into selling jubigals or any of that stuff. No, no. Jubigals 
Yeah, it's like two weeks ago with the Jupiter. Yeah, no, it was a million years back. Although I tell you, my favorite part of the last episode was freaking Chad Chad thinking that Slack John meant racist. Like and and oh the fact that God. even even trying to, to play racist, he's like, um, here's a monument which you can see is black. Exactly. Yeah. But the funny thing was that he had a racist inflection to it, but like <laughs> he can't but like, he can't he doesn't have the soul of a racist, right? <laughs> like, he can't really, he doesn't have those In innards. fact, that's what we're going to put on his tombstone. He didn't have the soul of a racist. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be my one line at his, uh, at his funeral. That's going to be my eulogy. And, but I'll use, like, like, uh, like, a nickname that, like, like Young Chaddington. Of course, he died at 50. <laughs> young Chaddington. Relatively didn't young. Have the that's soul he he's, of a racist. He, he's, that's when he becomes relatively young Chaddington instead of young Chaddington. <laughs> Reasonably young Chadworth. Relatively young Chaddington. Didn't have the soul of the racist. He just lived in racist times. I'm just going to. No, I'm just going to. Didn't have the soul of a racist. Dot, 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 leave. And by leave, I mean I don't even stay for the funeral. I just get in a car and I go. But, okay. And you say the word leave as you walk off. You're like, leave. <laughs> leave, I'm leaving. I'm out. Hey, I got something we can talk about. What? So uh, I came to uh, see your show and uh, help out in, in whatever way I could. Because, I don't know, for me, I know when I show up at – Halloween Horror Nights, and, and I get in to help with the show. Like, I don't want to be the guy who just calls in a favor and says, hey, man, I'm up here, especially because they know I'm going to be up there several times, and, like, doesn't do anything. Right. Like, my natural right. instinct is to try and kick in and help. Right, which you do, um, which you do, no lie. Yes, yes, and, and I tried. But it has led to a very interesting conundrum Go on. with the a rest of your conundrum? staff. A dragon conundrum? A dragon conundrum with the rest of your staff. Because I showed up for one day. And I, I was like there every show. I was like devising sales strategies with Chad. I was working with all you, the- You know what? My, my impression of you uh, for the first half of the night was a lot of this, a lot of, a lot of you were waving your hands over here and you're pointing at this and you're like, you need to do this, you need to do that. That was the first half. The second half of the night was a lot of this. All right, no, 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 no. Stop it, stop it, stop it. That, that's incorrect because I did not drink at all. The first, the first. No, no, no. You're right. You're right. You're right. No, no, I didn't no. You were at all. You were all hand waving. Shot. All hand waving and helpfulness. All hand waving, and I was out there. I was talking with the people that you know, because you're on stage. Your job is to is to keep the product fresh. Right. And and consistent. Like that's and that's another consistent. thing. They want every show to be the same as as or you know close. I mean, they're selling. If you're, they're going to say come and see Brian Brushwood do blank, they want him to do blank, and so it's got to be a consistent pro product. Absolutely. Yeah. You got to keep it fresh and consistent, like fish. Right. You I know what? My job out. was to be smelly and rot <laughs> on the dock. My no, that's the thing. When you when you feel yourself getting smelly, you bring another one of you. This metaphor is getting very weird. <laughs> you bring another one of you out there to put out. Right. And then, and then you take the smelly like, decaying like the parts of <laughs> me and you sell them at a discount to somebody who will deep fry them immediately and sell them as mashed up parts of my show. And that's how we get Brian chips. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I, I come there and, and you, and I'll tell you, this is something that you deal with on Scam School a lot, that we underestimate how important it is to walk into a situation and portray authority, right? We like do? If you, you and me? Well, it, society. Yes. Like you can yes. get away with in a general, yes. If you just walk in and act like you're running things. Yes. It is amazing what happened. The social engineering, when you walk in and act like you belong, act like you're in charge, act like you have a role, people respond. People respond. Absolutely. To it. So I, I walk on to your set and I am, uh, you know, I, I feel as by myself, I am an extension of you and Chad. That yes. you guys are people that I know, that we all have common goals. I just want to help make them happen. Yes. So I, I'm helping with the attendance stuff. I'm out there hustling, doing my shuck and jive on, on the streets of Hello, Halloween Hello, people, Nights. come see the Brian Rushwood show. You ever exactly. see a weirdo with spiky hair? You have. Well, have you seen him put a nail in his eye? What? Dude, You've seen that too? You know what? That's Screw exactly you. my sale. <laughs> I got walking to people and I'm like, I'm like, dude, you want to see somebody get a nail stuck in his eye? And then, wait for it, have it pop out the other eye? Dude, right there. Gates, right over there. <laughs> 
Uh, and then, so, you, then you freaking blow disease all over them. You <laughs> lean over and you just blah. And by the way, I'm leaning over into their child's face. They're, they have a child. <laughs> They're two year old in the stroller. You lean over and just go blah. <laughs> Uh, so here's the deal. The next night, I am helping you with your family. Uh, Bonnie's there. Your family's there. My and extended I'm, family. And, and yeah. I, I will only say this. I am not on the stage, right? I'm not involved with the staff. No, right. I am out uh, amongst the park helping you. You, with you are element. doing me a personal favor because my yes. extended family, my cousins, who are all very proud of me and all very excited, and the way they show that they're proud and excited is by showing up completely smashed. To all of my performances. <laughs> yes. Well, and, and for whatever that is, I have a beer, a few beers, while I'm out with your family. And then I come back, and as I am a friend of the show, I want to talk to Chad about how the sales have been going, if the ideas that we had have been panning out. But I'm behind yeah, the yeah, scenes. Even though you're doing, you're doing other stuff, you're doing me a personal favor, but the moment you walk on the grounds, you want to help out with the, with the sales and attendance and all that stuff. So, so you're, yeah. you're chipping in, yeah. Absolutely. But all of this, which is all justifiable, right, uh, is confusing to your staff because <laughs> they don't quite know who I am and why I have such authority. <laughs> and why you're backstage offering suggestions and barking orders with a beer in your hand. <laughs> that's the part yes. that really confuses them. Because that's, that's verboten. Uh, apparently, as a universal employee, you cannot be drinking... That is correct. Uh, that is correct. State. Yes. They, they can't be drinking on, on premises at all. No, right. no. But, you but, are you are a vendor. You could theoretically. Chad could theoretically, but you don't want to. You know, it's not a good. I'm, I'm precedent gonna, to say. Yes, I'm. A, I'm going to. I'm going to state for the record that Bizarre Magic Inc. encourages none of its employees, including its founder and CEO, uh, drinking while on on Universal property. Absolutely. So that is you know, but that is that is a decision that you get to make. Yes, apparently. I don't, uh, mm. Yes. Let, let's just operate under that assumption. Here's yes. my point to all this. Uh, I, I apparently, and you can probably speak to this more than I can, but like, I, I have a weird, there's, I don't think anybody really knows where to place me on the hierarchy. You, of you are, to... you have a mythic stature among everybody <laughs> working the Menace of Malice show. They don't know what to make of you. They, they, they know. Like it's if you ever want to throw somebody for a loop, and I don't care, I don't care how famous or not famous or what the heck you do. <clears throat> if you want to suddenly look important to somebody while you're at the bar, get a buddy of yours, right? Say, yeah. say you're, you're talking to a girl or whatever, and have your buddy walk up and then just say, "Oh, I'm so sorry. This, this is my co-host, Justin Robert Young." There we go. You drop that word co-host, and their brain writes this mythic backstory like co-host for what and then and then you you're like oh well it's just a little you know it's a little thing we have a podcast called between the sheets where we rate <laughs> the latest women that we've had sex with or you know whatever <laughs> but the point the point is hello and welcome <laughs> between, between the sheets. sheets i'm brian brushwood i'm justin robert young and you just Daddy got in bed with both of us <laughs> You want to you want to start hosting between the sheets? <laughs> between the sheets. How would that go? How would that go? That would be that would be like we'd open up. We're like, "Hello, Justin. How are you today?" Well, I'm great, Bri. I've so, never been better. So, who have you banged this week? <laughs> <laughs> you go. You're so classy and so smooth. And there's no worse word to use than banged for that. I know. Bang is so violent. It's just so like oh, it's like like hey, have you been in the company of a lovely lady over the last week? Like it's nothing like that. It's just like hey, who have you railed in the last seven days? <laughs> Seriously, who did you get screaming like a banshee? <laughs> Come on. By the way, this is the entire show. We never answer the question. We just ask it to each other in different ways. Welcome to Between the Sheets. <laughs> we answer the it's question, like... who have you laid lately? <laughs> and it's like it gets very... Who did you make join your pipe fitters union? <laughs> 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 we just keep asking each other back and forth. And then it just ends with us us just doing that. 
<laughs> it's like it's like who did you learn to know biblically? <laughs> and it just ends with you going, Bonnie, me going, nobody, and then it's it. That's it. That's the end of the show. <laughs> well, join us next week on Between the Sheets with Brian and Justin. <laughs> Oh, we have to do a back tease. We have to set up next week's show. <laughs> Join us well, next thank week. you. Join we... us next week on Between the Sheets when we find out who we. I don't know. <laughs> you're like, you're like, you're like, when we find out who saw his wrinkle sticky. <laughs> uh, by, we well, find by the way. out who Brian dipped his wick in. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, you, you know that, that train wreck had to cancel their tour, their tour that we helped promote. Reary, no, I didn't. <laughs> did you just say Reary? I did. <laughs> was was that like was that racist or or Scooby Doo? Uh, I'll go racist. <laughs> sure. Like if I have the choice between racist or Scooby Doo, I'm always going racist. Always go racist. <laughs> By the way, I would love to know if there's one situation in life where you could legitimately offer. Will that be racist or Scooby Doo? <laughs> maybe maybe we'll open a restaurant where we have two seating sections. Hello and welcome to our new episode of Racist or Scooby Doo. I'm Justin Robert. Yeah, that sounds like a bit we would do on this show. <laughs> We offer a line. Okay, here's what we do. We take a line out of context. Maybe it's a line spoken by, like, Hitler or David Duke or, or some <laughs> founder of the KK Clay. Or maybe maybe it's a line from Scooby-Doo. And we're like, we read the line, we're like, racist or Scooby-Doo? <laughs> no, no, it's going to be, Scooby-Doo. <laughs> so, wait, all right, but, like, do we make it have uh, the Scooby? Do we, like, switch a Hitler quote? Into the Scooby like vernacular. Yeah, yeah, no, whatever it is, it has to. That be spoken. would be really easy to tell if it's like German words <laughs> or like the retarded, uh, the retarded Scooby Doo way of thinking. Uh, you know what we do? Here's what we do to purify it. We 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 have to have it double blinded. So we take all the quotes and then we have them all read by Chad. But we tell Chad without any context. We tell him that they have to be read like Scooby Doo. So he doesn't know why he's reading them or what the game is or anything. But he reads all these things as Scooby. What about how Chad thinks you thinks that he could do a or makes you think that he could do a credible Scooby Doo impression. You know what? Nothing at all. Which is why we have Chad do it. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, <laughs> Ruby Doo. Uh, we need to eliminate the vermin of Berlin. <laughs> Ruby Doo. <-doo. laughs> Ruby Doo. I don't know. I don't know. Is that Ruby Doo? -doo? Uh, wait. How did we get here again? What were we, we were talking about? <laughs> We, were talking we about are doing a Smodcast <laughs> tribute. Look. <laughs> but there was something we were talking about before we were talking about the, 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 the uh, racist or Scooby-Doo. Between the sheets? We're yeah, it was between after the Between the Sheets. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We got nothing. Oh, I think, I don't know. We were talking about how I, I was drinking behind the scenes. And uh, apparently, I, all I'll say is that when I was behind the scenes of your show, today, tonight. And by the way, this is how weird this show is, is that I just spent two days hanging out with Brian and then I had to drive back down to South Florida so I could talk to him on the record. For three hours. Yeah, no lie. Like, it's like, oh, and then that night we'll do that. And you're like, that would be a great idea that we're not going to do. Instead, I'll drive three hours south and at 1 a.m., I'm sorry, at 2 a.m., we'll decide to start recording a podcast <laughs> over Skype between the two of us to be played a week later. It's brilliant, right? There we go. <laughs> this could not be going better. Uh, right, yeah, look, look, so look, when, right. I, when I was at the behind the scenes of your show, uh, Erica, who is incredibly running your show. I mean, yeah, you no, guys she's, have such she's a, a wizard. Operation. She's a damn genius, yeah. And I don't know whether it was as a, a, a joke or uh, from, uh, you know, just covering her bases or some point in between during your team meeting at the end of it. She just turned the floor over to me. Oh, that was... See, so that's, can... that's your mythic stature, right? Nobody knows what to make of you. <laughs> Nobody knows. They're like, well, like, I... Maybe, I, I, I think people... Like, whether I'm like, I'm like, maybe this high-powered producer <laughs> that's coming to double-check, you know, tighten things up. She finishes up the meeting, and she's like, well, that's it for our notes. Um, Justin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And like the didn't I don't know. Like, I think it's... Been, I'm sure it's a joke, but maybe there's an element of like... Uh, would it hurt? No, just 
go ahead. Say what you need to say. I'm telling you, dude, that's the magic of the word co-host because it lets people write their own back history and project whatever they want onto it. If you want to get laid tonight, go out and introduce someone to your co-host. Oh, for a little show you do. You don't have to. It doesn't matter what the show is. Because then you're humble, right? You know what? Wait, hold on. Well, I mean, you can, if you want to, do, if you could steal our Between the Sheets. That's you the only, be, that you're, that's public domain. You can domain. be Between the Sheets. Yeah. No, no, that's our, no. Does that make you sound gay, though? If you do the intro and you're like, I'm Justin and I'm Brian and we're Between the Sheets. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that that's how Does I that want... make it sound like we're banging each other? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Is that too gay? Actually, be, the only thing that would be worse would be like, I'm Brian, I'm Justin, and we are having sex. Together. <laughs> With each other. <laughs> With each other. All right. No, that's definitely <laughs> too gay. That line is way too gay. Oh, man. So many. It's so weird to be without any of our trappings. You know, we don't have the soundboard. You can't hit the too gay sounder or any of that stuff. You know what? It's kind of, it's not all that weird, though, because this is how we spend so much of, like, the goings on of getting the show together. No. Okay. Right? And by the way, I wish, you know what we should do is we should sell, like, a, an ultra diamond platinum membership for NSFW where you get to listen in on every private phone call the two of us have. So what, we just call, we just like call one of those, uh, like we have like a Ustream or something set up yes. where it's just, we it just never buzzes call each everybody. Other privately again. We only call each other where the Diamond Club can listen because, because no lie, if you guys heard half the bits we've rejected, I mean, it's like you would either love us or hate us, but it's like, if there's ever been a question about whether or not Brian and Justin were meant to do NSFW. It was settled today when we realized <laughs> that as long as there was one person who will listen to the two of us, I swear to God, we were. And by the way, who is being paid to stand in one position? They Who's couldn't leave. Paid to sit Count there and the audience with, with whoever says what. We go. We go to Harry Potter Islands of Adventure. And we, we, we go to get butterbeer. We spend 20 minutes doing an impromptu NSFW show for one freaking person <laughs> who's just waiting patiently for us to stop. By the way, I knocked over. That's how passionate I was. I knocked over when I did this. I like, no, no. This is like in Zelda when, like, uh, we just it, went it goes from day to night. <laughs> so, like, the sun is just set, and now we're going to be in night mode. And then in, right, in so six hours, I, it's going to rise again. I very slowly have to do this. Okay. No, so, yeah, we were in the three broomsticks, and uh, she was just standing there, and we just had the idea of how many people have to come in each day and do the like, oh, we are but two humble muggles who uh, need a parched, uh, or need a parch our, or sorry, clear our parched <laughs> throats need to with a parch our throats. We have far too much liquid in our throats. We need to parch them. <laughs> Where can, can you cast us a spell to parch our oh, throats? Throat us, dry us. Uh, yeah. So we like we would just be to play into it or be like you know like I. Ah, as a regal Slytherin graduate, you disgust me, wench. Please, I need to go get myself a butterbeer. Do you accept Discover? Um. <laughs> so, okay, the, the point the point is, is like, no lie, we will do an NSFW show for Because we did a game. We didn't even do, like, banter. No. Like, immediately it went to... We made you, yeah, we instantly made up a game. It was like, you asked how many people come in in character. And then yeah. before she answers, like, wait, wait. You're like, and you turn to me and you're like, Brian, the over-under I'm going to put at uh, four. Are you over or under on four? Yeah. And so I'm like, per oh. day. Yeah, yeah per day. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I think it's like two interact with this specific woman in character. What I love is the fact that you're clearly setting all this up to show the fact that you won the bet. Like, like it's important <laughs> to you that, <laughs> <Yes>! <laughs> you know. Yeah, it turns out it was way, the over-under, I was way wrong. Apparently way over four people per day come, come in, in, in character. character. And, and react to her as they would, you know, the woman at three broomsticks. <laughs> <laughs> of course. All right. So, uh, what are we, what were we talking about again? <laughs> All right, Justin, you got one chance to convince me why I should ever allow you to talk about Squarespace again. Last time we talked about Squarespace, they were so upset, they called in and they gave us a homework assignment with a pants check. And now, two weeks later, everyone's checking their pants on the internet. Hashtag pants check. Flexing the muscle of NSFW, all to make things right because of your terrible, terrible Squarespace reads. So, Justin... You explain to me why you should ever be allowed to talk about our wonderful, wonderful sponsor, Squarespace. Brian, I have one word for you. Genocide. Go! Oh! 
come on! Really? Wait for really? it! Wait for it! I just changed colors. That's the power of Squarespace. <laughs> what does that even mean? And I changed back to orange because I don't have a Squarespace account yet. Yes, genocide is what Squarespace is committing on hard to program websites, on websites <laughs> that, that succumb to traffic spikes. You know, they are you know murdering they actually, systematically. Uh, you're saying that websites with poor hosting need to be eradicated. They need to be and destroyed. And are being currently, one by one, because everyone's swipping the, swipping the square space, everybody. <laughs> they make up their own words. They're that advanced. So, so listen to this. No lie. Uh, one of our fans of, of the show, Nate Prouty, I, I went on a bender uh, right before I took my nap. I, I belted off like eight or ten little travel tips that have come up on the road, like battle-tested travel tip number 695. You know, here's how you sneak two liquids past didn't the notice TSA. That. I totally thing, didn't right? notice that dominating my Twitter feed today. Right, okay. Uh, well, but listen, when I did that, Nate Prouty, super fan, made an automatically refreshing, updating page that would aggregate all those travel tips and just display them one at a time. So you hit refresh, you got a different travel tip each time. I was so flattered and so stoked that I tweeted out, it was like uh, schwoodtips.com, I believe. And, uh, yes. and instantly, guess what happened? Uh, instantly, it was awarded best website of the century. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Obama nominated it for the Supreme Court. No, no. Those are the things that would have happened. Dare except, to dream. Dare to dream. Except Nate was not hosting on Squarespace, and the thing went down just from my tweet. I oh, my God. Really? Of, it crashed? I didn't have that big of an army, and it crashed. It totally, and it died. And if he had done it on Squarespace, it would never have had that problem because anything hosted on Squarespace, their servers can handle the traffic it's distributed. It's if you get dug, that explodes overnight. If you're the next YouTube, you're covered. It happens automatically. Yes. Best of art is also super easy. It would have been prettier too. I mean, no, if I, Nate, I'm really flattered you put that together. But what he thinks I mean, your website just, looked like garbage. Like it looked like a hot pile of cat garbage that a cat piled up in a living room and then lit on fire with his cat paws. I'm just gonna say, Nate, that it probably would have looked way better on Squarespace because- Okay, by the way, awesome just in while, while we're recording this, it crashed again. They tried to go check it out as we're talking about it and it crashed again. Folks, this wouldn't have happened on Squarespace because they're committing genocide against bad servers even as we speak. <laughs> just, I really hate how uncomfortable you make me feel during these reads. Listen, you know what, I think, you know what I, think your, I think your problem is? Is not what I say, it's, what I, it's how confident I look while saying it. Uh, you know what? Maybe it is. And maybe it's because you understand the power of Squarespace. Here's the thing. If you don't I do. use Squarespace, it's you unstoppable. Can for a free two week <laughs> trial. Never be don't stopped. even ask for a credit card. Don't even ask for a credit card. You just sign up, you give an email, all of a sudden you're live online. You, you, it's it's your word dot squarespace dot com dot com. Right dot com as well. <laughs> dot com now available any minute <laughs> now. But the point is, is templates look amazing, super easy to update. And you can even update from your iPhone. Head on over, and when you do sign up, if you want 10% off the lifetime of your order, and most importantly, to keep uh, little reads like this afloat in the ether, then you got to use promo code NSFW. That's NSFW. Not only does that keep us in business, it gets you 10% off the lifetime of the order. Uh, people are using it. People are using the code, and people are noticing, which is why I gave Justin this last chance to ever do a read, and he use the j the g word i was gonna say the j word but that's not the j that too word. that too <laughs> it's word. actually that's my stripper name jenny side <laughs> all right that's actually right. what i go as <laughs> <laughs> you know what actually you yeah. reminded me of something i intercepted a tweet he, here's the thing like i follow people for random reasons yeah and in this case uh there's there's a chick uh, uh deidra at one of the universities up in erie erie pennsylvania sure. that i followed you know because it's like hey i'm following you why don't you follow me and i'm like sure i'll follow you you were nice enough to book me at your college but then it's like man now i'm following a, a, a girl who's in college and who has very different interests from somebody like me yes but she retweeted something from the uh, uh one of the actresses on glee 
about uh, apparently there was a controversy. Did you read about this with the controversy about the super sexy Glee photo shoot? Yes. Oh no, in GQ. So they have Leah Michelle who plays the main chick, and then the hot blonde one who was pregnant last season. Yes. Uh, and they're all sexied up. And I guess for the, the Leah Michelle character, because Diana played... Agron is her yes. name. Yes. Diana Agron. Okay. So here's the thing, and this is what's great about Twitter is is through social pressure, I find myself find, uh, finding myself, I, I follow people who I would never follow in real life, and I wouldn't even listen to them. Uh, yeah. Deidre, I love you. I would follow and listen to everything you say. So, so, so shut up, Deidre. <laughs> no, no, no. Brian but, says, shut your filthy But mouth. as a result, I find myself clicking on links I never would have. It's, it's like the gene pool. The reason the gene pool works is this diversity. People who you think shouldn't be breeding, breed. And as a result, there's stuff that's get injected to the gene pool that turns out to be really useful and that you don't expect, yes. right? And in this case, I ended up clicking on an art article by, from Glee star Diana R. Agron addresses the GQ photo shoot controversy, right? Now, yes. uh, first of all, we're talking about a woman who looks like this. She's 24 years old. Bang. Plays a kid who just had a, another kid. Kid who had yes. a kid, right? <clears throat> uh, one of the things that really impressed me was... Uh, what she posted on her blog. Now, apparently, I guess the criticism is what? That it was too sexy and that my eight-year-old watches well, Glee? Well, yeah, you know, and, and, and there were some shots that I, I can understand why they're getting flack. Like, the full-on beaver shot? That didn't go over so hot? The beef shot, yeah. <laughs> the beef? The leave, the leave it to beaver shot. <laughs> 1059, the beef. The <laughs> beef. Uh, yeah, there's one of Leah Michelle specifically where she's like on a locker room uh you know, kind of bench, and but it's like you know knees, knees are apart, and you can just see kind of you know some panty action. What? Yeah. So you know, look where, at it. Where but you can, as as the father of two girls, uh, you can tell me whether or not you would you would appreciate them if they were fans of Glee, as I'm sure they would be if they were a little older. No. Okay, all right. Well, here's the thing about Glee. Anyone who lets a kid watch Glee is is freaking high because Glee is clearly meant as a dark comedy. Well, but, but kids like Glee. Kids love Glee. I mean, you know, 12... <laughs> kids go, 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 go. <laughs> How you like it when it's on you, sucker? Go ahead. Oh, my God. Uh, kids love it. Girls aged 10 to 18 probably love it the most. Well, that is unfortunate because the best parts of Glee are the fact that it is a super dark comedy about yes. evil people doing evil things to each other. That's why I watch Glee. Right. Right. Although and I will say it has not been as good since the end of the first Well, that's time. why I stopped watching Glee is because yeah. they stopped with the evil. Once once yeah. I stopped seeing the evil with the sugar candy coating, you know, that 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 Eminem turd, I I I lost interest in it. Yes. <clears throat> it's gotten more evil, but it's still the plot. Well, I anyway. can't like there were three episodes so no, in take, a take, row. take a look take a look at that Leah Michelle photo. I want I want your snap judgment on it. Uh, well, uh, too sexy for you know, <clears throat> I don't know my my eight my eight year old my twelve year old my sixteen year old probably. Well, no, I'm sure. Yeah, can you can you find those photos though? I don't know. I don't know. Oh. Click on those links at the top. Uh, in, okay. In oh article, my goodness! Hang on, I just found. I just clearly found. Or you just yeah, just Google. You're talking about this little, bit, this little boy right there, right? There we go. <clears throat> right. That's the one I was talking about. All right. Well, so that's happening, right? Uh, so, wait. do you think inappropriate or not? Yeah, well, I mean, it depends. It depends. It's like if Glee was it's, a it's show. It's a men's magazine. Right, okay. Let's say Glee was a show on HBO okay. with no expectation of, of being popular among 12-year-olds, right? Okay. Uh, and, and it was the exact same show. Nothing was different about it. It still had the same snarky humor and then sure. you know, pop, you know wrapped up in a poppy candy coating. Uh, and then they showed this. I'm like, I mean, I don't, I, mean, what, what, I, I don't see anything wrong with it. What about you? Oh, I don't know. I mean, and I don't think it, it's a problem now. I, but I, I understand where, when they run those photos, where they have to be willing to accept the fact that they're going to get flack for it. Right. That photo in specific. The other one, I, never, I really okay. Didn't. Well, here's it's, here's you know, what I wanted to say about this, right? So, reading this article, I was really impressed with what uh, this chick. Uh, and again, I've already forgotten her name again. Uh, Diana Argon. Right. Exactly. Diana Argon. Agron. Agron. Not Argon. Yes. She's not a noble gas, thank you very much. <laughs> she is. I'll tell you what. I would like to make a really witty periodic tables joke here, so just write your own. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine I made some kind of joke about the, the noble gases. Okay. 
So, so here's what she wrote in her blog, and I think this is really great. Uh, yeah. She says, um, uh, in the land of Madonna, Brittany, Miley, Gossip Girl, and other public figures and shows that have pushed the envelope and challenged the levels of comfort in their viewers and fans, we are not the first. Now, in per- per- perpetuating the type of images that evoke these kinds of emotions, I'm sorry. If you're hurt or these photos make you uncomfortable, it was never our intention. And if your eight-year-old has a copy of our GQ cover in hand, I am sorry. But I have to ask, how on earth did it get there? This is where it gets good. This is where she really impresses me as being a smart young, young lady. Okay. She goes on to say, for GQ, they asked us to play very heightened versions of our school characters, a Hit Me Baby One More Time version. At the same time, it, or at the time, it wasn't my favorite idea, I did not walk, but I did not walk away. I must say, I'm trying to live my life with a Sharpie marker approach. You can't erase the strokes you've made, but each step is much bolder and more deliberate which that was the part that resonated with me. That was the part that is exactly what it means to live in the age of the internet. Like look at, look at Leo Laporte, look at all of us where it's like a mistake cannot be taken back. Everything is on the permanent record. So when you have a Mike Arrington, Mike Arrington dust up, all you can do is own your failure or own your mistake or whatever it is and move forward and write bolder, which makes me think of like a, like Bob Ross and the fact that he would say, there's no mis- no mistakes, there's just happy accidents, right? Yeah. Which I, I, I don't know, I thought that was a very sad no, and No, no, I, I totally think, and uh, I personally believe that we are entering into a point where so many mistakes are on the record, not only by our own selves, but by everybody else, that a mistake means something different. You know, I, I think that we are far more willing to forgive easier because now we see people screw up on the record so much more often I, and we screw up on the record so much more often uh, I mean, oh, I, you I and me it, really we're, we're gonna noticed. get to a point you and me you and me we screw up on the record from time to time every once in a while brad bro <laughs> i don't know if you watch the show um, <laughs> i don't know if you've seen an sfw exactly i am I, i'm fully of the opinion that we are in our lifetime going to be putting supreme court justices on the bench who have like sexting pics that they took at age 15 on the internet. And I'm, I'm totally I, fine with that. That's, it's, it's, it's a warts and all world that we live in. And we all, the, the one effect is number one, none of us get to come off looking like Benjamin Franklin or anyone who has this, you know. Uh, Benjamin bird. Franklin was kind of dirty. I know, I know. He's a dirty even, bird. No, you, you know, wait, wait, did you say he's George Burns? No, I said he was a dirty bird, although, you know. You what? know. So is George Burns? <laughs> I, say I goodnight, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> say say good night, America. Good night, America. <laughs> um, so, uh, but and the then point, he bags America. <laughs> he just the point and is then he's on. And then he's our guest on between the sheets. <laughs> <laughs> so the point is, is that you. By the way, that's my new euphemism for sex. Is it, it's like like hey, you and uh, Stacy, are you guys gonna be our next guest on between the sheets? <laughs> And they're like, our, you're like me and my genitals. <laughs> <laughs> so the point is, is like, I don't mind the fact that we are entering a warts and all more accurate picture of everyone. Cause we've all got stuff that we're not proud of. And some of it happens in public. And I certainly have, uh, like for example, I don't know, like, like I've told before, I've had really rough shows in the past. And I'm thankful that none of them happened to be videotaped. But at some point, there's going to be a show where people full on throw fruit at me live on stage. That's going to be on the record like the Justin Bieber getting hit with a bottle on the head thing. I'm sure he's not thrilled that happened in public, right? But it's like, that's a warts and all thing. This is the real world that we live in and everything's going to be on the record. And I'm kind of okay with that because it kind of forces an honesty where you you don't get to pretend that something didn't happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, yo, you can't bury it. It's just not going to happen. Right. You know, you can try to bury it and it will get up like a zombie and eat your brain. All right, so uh, what do you want to do right now that you will regret for the rest of your life? It's a new bit we're doing on NSFW called. By the way, and I was thinking about this. What? Like, uh, when, we were, when you were talking about, like, if we offered, like, the triple diamond platinum package. Yes, that's where like, we confess to you. Because we, we talk a fair amount. Like, we, we actually, we have not gotten to the point as, as creative partners where we actually hate each other. No, but I look forward life. to that day where I can't stand <laughs> you anymore, and I'm, we're just too wrapped up in success, and we have to deal with each other, even though secretly I'd rather stab my eyes out than look at your face for one more second. <laughs> I'm, just like, I'm just like, oh, shut up. 
<laughs> Shut up, you! I hate you. <laughs> Be like, um, like, why don't you die in the? Hey, it's an SFW. <laughs> We're live. <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited, Brian Brian! Oh my gosh, I can't believe it! Yeah. Uh, like which, which, by the way, we have to, if if my indication, if the prehistory of all the local morning radio DJs before us is any indication, at some this point will we will grow to hate each other, and I'm glad we haven't gotten there yet. We're also going to be on coke at some point. We're, well, and we're also coke. going to have a three-way with two overweight women. And uh, possibly offend. Wait, our... each of us? We each get our own heavies three way. Well, actually, one of us has a has a three way with two overweight women, and the other one has like, like, I don't, like an indecent exposure incident that happens. All right. I call dibs I on indecent exposure. I was gonna say, exposure. yeah. I mean, because you can self salvage your marriage at that point. <laughs> um, oh, there you go. I love the fact that we're even dipping up our crises in the future. <laughs> you know, I'll screw two fat bones. <laughs> I'm I'm down with it. All right, all right. Uh, no, but I would just say, like, we actually like I confide in you. You know, stuff you confide in me. Now I don't know if I'm ready to offer offer that level of of, of, of privacy. Which one? The like the super diamond. Tri triple platinum package. Oh, you you don't want to offer it to the masses. You're saying there's there's some good stuff. Well, no, no. I think it's like, like, all right. There, there are bits that we haven't put on the air because there, there, there is a fantastic bin of rejected premises. You are correct, yes. sir. Yes. Like, I'll just try to explain this in a way that don't do uh, it. I, I, you're going to regret this. I'm going to highly, as your advisor, I encourage F you not to move forward. You, your R R did. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 that's done. That's done. That's that's as close to that bit as you get. As your advisor, <laughs> I, I would like to remind you, it's three in the morning, and <laughs> you may or may not be drinking right now. So go ahead. I'm not. I'm not drinking. I only I drink said you may or may not. I covered show. both bases. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, but no, I don't know. What, I mean, what do you think right, about so that idea good. about living your life in Sharpie? I think that's. I think that's really. No, it's cool. I know. I think. Listen. Uh, I think she is handling it professionally and I think she's handling it in, in, a, in a great way and, and it really it speaks to her maturity that she can make a, a comment like that and I think if you're really looking at this and you're really looking at hey these girls are role models they shouldn't be doing this blah 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 then you really can't separate her decision to do that photo shoot with her decision to offer an intelligent commentary on her blog to the same people who would find her a role model for taking her clothes off and looking sexy. Right. By the way, uh, as we're talking about this, in my imagination, I'm picturing Tony writing up the description for this episode of NSFW, you know, NSFW number 47, dot, 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 in which Brian and Jers, Jerbs <laughs> bravely admit that they've watched Glee. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've been on the record on this before. We've talked Glee before. What else? What else are you watching? You watching anything else? I you're crazy about the Mad Men, but I can't get all the way love in. Love Mad. Mad Men just ended. Rubicon just ended, and I loved Rubicon. I thought Rubicon was awesome, and I really, really, really dug this season of Mad Men, including the finale, which I was underwhelmed by initially. But as I've wrapped my head around it, uh, you know, day after day after day, there are it's just so many great little subtle literary kind of things about the character, where his character went, Don Draper's character went throughout the year. So I, However, I will say far and away, I have one show on my radar. And I bet I know Walking what it is because that's what I want to talk about. Walking Dead. Yes. That's it. Okay. So my question, my that was going to be my next question. That's the whole reason I brought up TV is because I wanted to know, do you think that the fact that we had Michael Rooker on an SFW is going yeah. to color slash corrupt our enjoyment of Walking Dead. Will it suddenly become an entire game of, <gasps> I know that guy. He was on our show. You know, I don't think so because I was such a Rooker fan to begin with that, like, I would I would be like, Rooker, oh, my God. Um, even though he was on our show. I think, like, now the only difference is that now I have his email and I can be like, 
You were so awesome on Walking Dead. <laughs> do me a favor, please don't do that. Please don't, please don't type. Because I can totally see, I can totally see where this goes. It's like, it's like you are overwhelmed with passion and you want to express it to Michael Rooker. So you sit down and you're like, Michael, I know that we've had a professional relationship over NSFW, but I just have to tell you, you were absolutely fabulous. I truly believe the zombies were eating you at that time. You want to know what? It's like how... When I said it, I made. I was like, I thought you were gonna criticize me for being too fanboy, but you apparently want to criticize me for being too erudite. Yes, <laughs> you will, because you won't get all fanboy. In your, you'll do the opposite in your email. You're like, just wanted to let you know, De dearest Mister Rooker, <laughs> tis I, Justin R. Young. You might <laughs> remember it from our latest correspondence on my broadcast. NSFW with my compatriot Brian Thunderbrushwood. <laughs> you're like, you're like, cheerio, best wishes, yours truly, Justin Robert Grubles the first. <laughs> I, I just had to say, I was so overcome with joy when I saw you upon my flickering tube in the Walking Dead pilot. Your animated pictures truly inspired the finest of revelry and respect. Wait a minute, why is that a problem? <laughs> Why, where are we in, in a situation where it would embarrass you if I was very polite? I said a politely worded uh, praise email to Michael Rooker. Because it would be so over the top, dude. It's just like, it's the he reads through that stuff, man. He's just like, you're clearly. But no, I'm not. I, I, what if I really think he's awesome, which I'm sure he will because he's awesome and I'm so excited about that show. And I just say like, hey, man, I watched the show. It's so good. I'm so excited. I hope you don't die this episode or next episode. I challenge you, you to have the gonads to say, okay. you're pretty good. You know what you should have done? <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Wait a minute. So that's fine? That's where we want to go? We want to go say, in, I'm just saying, look, like, anyone, anyone can be respectful and, and <laughs> toe the line. But it takes a special kind of guy to ruin a relationship in order to offer his thoughts <laughs> of how he could have done it better. And that's what I'd like to see from you, sir. Oh, what do you think? All right, so I write an email that's like, Rooks. <laughs> Jerks. Uh, watch your Walking Dead episode. And then I have a video of me going, just a video an animated video gif of me going. It's, it's, an, it's an animated gif of you going. <laughs> Which, by the way, if you're, it's already been made. On the, the gif has already been made of me going. <laughs> and it's looping over and over and over again. And I just put that in there. And. Uh, how, what do you think Rooker's reaction is? You're uh, Rooker. You open up that email. What's your reaction? I'm Michael Rooker. I'm just like you're Rooker. I, I lean back and I assume he's got like an assistant named uh, you know Smelves, which is a very weird name Smelves? for someone to have. Is that a given name or is that his nickname? Uh, it's, for it's, it's you know what he apparently had a given name, but over the ages for reasons nobody knows his name has become Smelves right but he now That's works he. he now works for Michael Rooker yeah he's okay. a very sallow faced individual he looks like he's carved out of wax and then he just and, and Rooker <laughs> Rooker sees this Rooker email Smelves no 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 yeah Rooker he just leans back and he's like Smelves add Justin Robert Rung to the list and you only survive because of that mispronunciation like somehow he adds an R on your name, and then meanwhile, but it's like it's like Terminator, where like all of a sudden there's like a killing spree of Justin Robert Rook. Exactly, exactly. And then meanwhile, meanwhile, like you're going out like, hey man, me and Rooks, we're real with each other, man. We don't hide secrets. I told him exactly what I thought. And meanwhile, like because he knows you're gonna die, he actually writes you back saying, okay. I truly ap appreciate your feedback, and <laughs> I encourage you to continue to tell me what you'd like to see in future episodes. All right, but then he's killing the wrong person. And by the way, Lord knows how he hasn't corrected his error when he sees Justin Robert Young emailing him. Uh, <laughs> well, week after he's week. not a details guy. Michael Rooker in this scenario is is a he's a he's getting things done. Uh, he and it smells who doesn't realize the error. Gotcha. Okay, so he from that encouragement, I email him on episode two, and I'm like, <laughs> Mike, it's J J R Y. Watch your second episode. Eh? <laughs> animated, animated GIF of you like, eh? like that. Yeah. yeah, and that's it. 
then, then what does he do? Does he keep encouraging me, knowing that I'm going to die an even more painful what death? What he does is he assumes that smells is already <laughs> orchestrating like a pre-written plan they have that involves keeping you alive for torture purposes. Like, do you like think they have a all... code? Like, is he like, work up at number three? Yeah, no, no, no. Whereas, like, like smells, like he assumes by smells. the fact that you're still alive, he doesn't bother to talk to smells. Smells is doing his own thing, right? Okay. So it's like he assumes by the fact that you're alive that smells has already poisoned your second cousin, and has like okay, and has like you know captured and raped your your best friend in third grade, right? So it's just like, like it's a, it's a wow, wet. I really a, work a, a large spiral. <laughs> let me tell you, Rook, really Rook does not play spiral. around. Rook has Rook puts. Let me tell you, dude. You think Chad is good on this show? You haven't seen Smells, all right? You better smells hope. Kills, you literally. better hope I like, never get a contract get a murderer. Yes, exactly, exactly. Man, can you imagine if Chad was a contract murderer? Oh my god, <laughs> that would go. Dude, imagine Chad's last words before he pulls the trigger in a, in a darkened room. He's just like, so um. Brian Brushwood says hello. I guess I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he says, <laughs> and it turns out he's like killing smells for some reason. <laughs> no, <laughs> I contract, I contact you. Yes. I get the yes. word that Justin Robert Rungs are dying. I call you, you talk to Chad, and you're like, uh, Chad, I need you to off smells. And he's like, um, that smells? Rooker smells? And, I, and you're like, yeah. And he's like, um, uh, you, you want me to make the fake blood first? <laughs> That's the way it would be. He would immediately ask, well, do you want it to be a kind of a bloody affair or do you just want me to poison him or stab him in the face? Because the thing is, if you stab him in the face, it's going to attract a lot more media attention than a poisoning. But you don't get your message across with a poisoning. Why are you laughing so hard? Is that because I nailed it? You nailed it! <laughs> Only because uh, I don't even know if he does it, but the idea of like my tick for the chat impression was ending with the I don't knows, and your tick for the chat impression was ending the last sentence through clenched teeth. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's like, because if we die, it's. <laughs> This is great, dude. I'm going to start ending everything with clenched teeth. When it's like, I, I dare you, next time you, go, next time you go to a restaurant, I want you to every time Wait, you... Wait, why do you keep giving me this terrible advice? No, no. Why would I okay, insult this my, is you, my, my no, this friend, is a great Michael game. Rooker? This is going to be a great game. Okay, I dare you to go to a restaurant, and yeah. every single interaction you have with the wait staff. Okay. Has to end in clenched teeth. You can say whatever you want. So it's like, so, so it's like, well, I'm, I'm at a restaurant. You walk All up. Right. And you know, uh, <laughs> hi, welcome to Bennigan's. Would you like to try our salmon? Uh, you know what? I would love to know more about the salmon before right now. I'm really hungry. Do you think you can get me a diet coke? I think you would seem like you had a stroke. No, no, no. no. Okay, so that, that's the first interaction. That's going to be, but then where does right. it go to the next level? Uh, of yeah, course, so sir. Of course, sir. Let me go get it. Great, great. Beep, 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 beep. All right, and I got a diet here's coke. Your coke. All right, Hi, awesome. sir. Uh, here's your coke. Uh, you have any more questions on the salmon? No, 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 no. Not going to go with the salmon. I love the blackened chicken fajitas, but I would love it if I could get those without any bell peppers. See, I think. The more you master this technique, the longer you can go through clenched teeth. Like, I feel like you should get to the point where you're only saying two words. And then the <laughs> so rest by the of end, it like is by the end of the night, and, the, and you win if they never once comment on it. So the and by the way, I feel like this technique is so successful that we're in our lifetime going to see a president who <laughs> operates under this strategy. He's just like, he's, he's like, <clears throat> like my fellow Americans. <laughs> No, 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 no. He has to go like, my fellow Americans. I've seen the state of our union, <laughs> and it is strong. No, no, no. It's got to be like you're at, you always, you can get away with the clenched teeth as long as you're asking a question. See, like, uh, again, like, oh, like it's okay. dessert time, right? So go ahead. All right, sorry, what are we doing? Dessert. dessert. Oh, okay. Um, you know, we had a lovely dessert tray. Our key lime pie is fab. Oh. My God, I would love to have key lime pie. <laughs> key lime pie. <laughs> I would like to have pie. <laughs> Do you have any pie? Pie on you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
fire on you. No, 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 but it's like, it's like, <clears throat> I'd love to have key lime pie, but you know what? It's a little bit fattening. That's not a question. Could, <laughs> do you think you could get me maybe some death by chocolate? <laughs> Oh my god, you're not to that level where you can say death by chocolate because you definitely sounded retarded on that one. Well, oh, but I'm saying with training, you can make death it happen. By chocolate. So how do, how do you rank, like, there has to be, like, different levels of Jedi Masters in, in the ability of, to speak with clenched teeth. I, do you count number of syllables or number of complete sentences spoken between clenched teeth? No, I would say it is judged on two levels, two levels alone. Words spoken... And seriousness or importance of the topic. Like, let's say Dr. Justin Robert Young yes. comes out and says, uh, I have some very sobering news. <laughs> Are you kidding? Seems as if Are you kidding? your mother might not make it. Have you settled <laughs> her last will and testament? That is the worst. You would have failed in that. There's no way they let you get away with that. It's got no, to be no, but you have to come with confidence. No, 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 no. Here's I, that would be black belt. I can't do it right you, now. You cannot but do there's it with a, there's a time That's and a place. It, if you want to get away with talking between clenched teeth, you can't be confident. Because then it's just like, how have you swallowed all your last will and testament? That's no good. What you got to do instead, you're like, listen, the test came back. Uh, I, I, I don't want to say how it came out, but I do want to know... Have you said all your last will and testament? That's so flippant. <laughs> I don't want to tell you how it goes like he's holding back a dirty joke. <laughs> the dirty joke is it's uh, oh, it runs with Erminal. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the worst thing ever, dude. This is a terrible uh, idea. I say we take the whole thing. This back. is a really bad idea. We should scuttle this entire thing. <laughs> and we find out what it's Andrew that is horrible and unsalvageable. <laughs> I wonder how long until we get a phone call. It was like, hey guys, love the show. Maybe you shouldn't have had that idea a while back. <laughs> uh, are you guys married to the last fifteen minutes? <laughs> That's that's how we'll know. Is Tony's editing this episode? He calls us. He's like, guys, watch the episode. Thought it was a really interesting departure from what wor has worked in the past. But uh, that's how you know it's coming. By the way, <laughs> but uh, have you considered cutting out all the teeth grinding parts? Specifically, the parts that deal with dying relatives. <laughs> Man, can you imagine? I don't know. It's so messed up to uh, uh, to be to be grown. Like 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 we make jokes about terminal cancer. So I'm about yeah. to get make it real real here. But it's like uh, it's <laughs> that's always good on a comedy show. By the yeah, way, I know, no, no, but it's, it's like, always like, hey, listen, when we're playing flippant uh, dark comedy, the best thing is to ground it right in reality. No, so but now we know, all feel I, guilty. You know, I want to own this. I want to own this. If we're going to go to dark own territory, it, it's who just can own like, death. This is going to be real at some point. And here's the thing. is Which do you want to choose? Would you rather own it as the person who dies or the person who has to deal with somebody dying? Are, are you suggesting a suicide pact? No, 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 no. I'm, what I'm saying is... What I'm saying is it's like it's like dark stuff's going to happen, right? And it's like yes. it's going to suck either to have an experience The wind blowing. What? I was just, I don't know. It's like in life. No okay. Wins. Okay. All right, all right. All right. But the point is, is like, like. Okay. Let's say, let's say, one of us has to have a piano, grand piano, drop from forty stories and end us instantly, so gotcha. fast that yeah. you don't even know it happens, right? So this is how we're gonna go out. Would you rather be the one who, like, let's say, at this moment we're at the height of our success and we're super happy, right? And then, would you rather be at the height of your success and then it's over? Or would you rather be at the height of your success and watch your meal ticket, the one who's cleverer than you, eat the dust, and you have to experience the slow decline as everyone else figures out you're not actually funny? Where you're bitter, you're showing up to Dragon Con, thinking people owe you something? Um, Did I just break your brain? 
I no, I would rather um I'd rather live. Even though even though it just gets progressively worse for you in this scenario. Yeah. I would rather trade off even if it's a slow decline, I'd rather trade off that you know, that peak. You would rather be than like die. Yeah. Hmm. You'd rather spend a lifetime of hearing how much funnier Brian was than you for the rest of your life as your self-confidence shatters and project after project fails. But I can always kill myself. No, but, right? th but, then, but then you're choosing Or to am I cursed? <laughs> or if you, know you die, does that put a gypsy curse? You know what? <laughs> Actually, as I die, I live long enough to be like, Justin, remember that conversation we had at 3 a.m. that night? <laughs> It's real. It's totally true. <laughs> it's, it's totally true. And then this green mist comes out of my fingers and goes up your nose. And you're like, oh. And I can never die now. Well, I mean, you can't die. What You will live a long and fruitless life. How about that? Like, you now well, know for a fact. I can't kill myself, though. Well, you can, but then you no, no, know. No, that takes all the teeth out of it. Because, like. If the choice is either no. test to see whether I can survive this or I'll kill no, no, myself. No, no, look, look, look. In this scenario, Brian died a hero defending yeah. the sidewalk from a, an attack from a piano. Sure. But you will die a coward for killing yourself because you got bored. It's fine. Who cares? I'll, I'll be dead. What? I'll be dead. No, okay. you wouldn't. You, you're le you, you don't even care about your legacy? You wouldn't think about that? No, I mean, I care about my legacy in terms of what I can do for it now when I'm working but mm. like if I merc myself whatever. What is merc? When you say merc, what does that mean? Kill. I, I understand that part but like where did that come from? M-E-R-C? M-E-R-C, yeah. Like mercenary? I always thought of it like, 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 like a mercenary like uh, like you're, you're gonna merc merc somebody. <laughs> and then I always liked That sounds uh, like my, such a word friend, you would make my, up. My, like my good merc. friend from college, Sean Brucher always had the, the expression self merc to refer to suicide. Like if I ever self merc Make sure that you get my. <laughs> that's like that's that's like a true professional mercenary who is like the teletype goes. It's like we got our next target. It's me. He hunts himself. He freaking like he gears up. He goes. Yeah, like score. Yeah, exactly, exactly. He's painting his face. He's like, my target's gonna be more deadly than any we've ever decided we've ever worked against. He's but as he good as team? me. And he actually walks into the mirror and has a dialogue with himself. He's like, you thought I'd never catch you, did you? <laughs> I got to admit, I never thought you'd catch me. Well, guess what? You're finally <laughs> going down. Well, if it had to be anyone, it should have been you. That's right. Now, you want to do it yourself or you want me to do it? I want you to do it. Well, maybe I want you to do it. <laughs> maybe I think it gets all bizarre from there. Good. Now, I'd watch that one man show. You would not watch that one man show. You just didn't I'd, watch I'd that say, one man show. Yeah, you I'd watch say, your last I'd four say seconds. I was going, back. and then I just wouldn't show up. All right. Uh, all right. Real quick. All right. To just to flip the thing. All right. So let's say I die. Okay. And it is clearly revealed that that uh, you. I've been carrying you on the show. You've been carrying my child. Yes. <laughs> and uh, now, do you do you want to die, or? Do you want to live a life where people are like, wow, you know, you used to be really, really funny on these shows. Uh, maybe I'm in a different position because I, I've got the, the wife and the kids and I definitely, I definitely want to take care. You'd have to make it a pretty dark scenario for me to want to give up on it because like even if my professional career totally went in the crap for podcasting or broadcasting in general, right? Yeah. Uh, at, at least I'd still be able to work my live shows. No, so we'd no, have to write it in it's, like... It's, it's it seeped its way into, right, right. into your live so, shows. So, so if it, You're not getting booked at all. Not getting booked at all. No. Can I, can I at least make money at a Walmart to feed my family? I mean, you can get a job, but it's really demeaning. And uh, by the way, we, we became famous enough that now you get a lot of, hey, you were that guy. Oh, dude, that's dark. That's yeah, dark. So you get a lot of that. Uh, dude, I'll tell you, the shortcut is, like, when you got a fa family to provide for, yeah, dude, I'll put up with all that stuff. I'll, I'll live with that forever. Uh, because, mainly because, I don't know, I tell you where it gets dark. It's like, if you tell me I can only make $10,000 a year, like, I also break my leg. And then, uh, and then I can only. And by the way, like, the, the guy who's in the ambulance is like, it's like, oh, whatever. 
you know, like you killed Justin, so your legs should shatter as well. <laughs> so like so all our fans, there's also all our fans think I killed, killed you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, and I'm I, I'm I can't uh, say that it's not because I wrote that in my will. <laughs> okay, that so Brian so, uh, Brian okay. is probably gonna kill me. <laughs> okay, so what you're saying is the scenario is I. <laughs> Uh, you die, and the fact that you die completely ruins any chance of success I have in the podcasting or broadcast market. Yeah, absolutely. It also corrupts my ability to get booked for live performances to where yeah. I only can work l entry level jobs. Like a Wal yeah. I'm a Walmart greeter, basically, right? Yes, you're and, not even on. You're not even on the red. Right, and like and like and like fully one third of the people walking in say, "Holy crap." Are you that guy who might have killed no, Justin? No, 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 no. It's not a third. Although you get a lot more glances than you do people talking to you. Yeah. But at least twice a week. Because that way you're dreading it more than it is ha actually happening. Okay. And I'm assuming... Uh, well, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, I mean, I could worry. Assu uh, okay, so I live like 50 more years. And in that time, I can never make more than $10,000 a year. But at least I'm providing for my family. Also, by the way, at school, um, the kids are telling your daughters that like you killed your way more talented partner, and they really start to lose respect for you. You have you have a okay, lot of you're conversations. Evil. You, sir, are evil, and this discussion <laughs> is over. How about that? You like oh, that? Oh, come you on! Like you're that? the one who brought this up, dude. That is so. I, I tell you, here's where here's where it breaks down. If Why you're saying you killed Justin, Daddy. If you're saying that part of the scenario is that I lose the respect of my own family and children, then I'd rather I'd rather get crushed by a piano than that. It's like I would, I would work forever and put up with any any stuff internally, but but it would be because I'm trying to take care of the family the whole time. And then you take that away and like forget it, I'm done. So just because they, I mean, maybe like they grow out of it. Are, are you trying? Oh my God, you're trying to encourage me to stay alive now. Screw you, sir. We already agreed. <laughs> I'm taking the I'm taking the piano, and you can limp on and and kill yourself twenty years later because you're a chicken. No, I wouldn't though. I mean, you just I just said you would. You just said you would. Having that option invalidates the challenge. Hmm. Because I could just die. All right, so now, what I'm we... saying the gypsy curse. That that's where we need to take that scenario. With the, with the now... smile, I, I gotta learn how to make green smoke come out of my fingers, so that when I do actually die, like like, like I'm in the area, and it's like I, I I freaking get hit by by a train or whatever because I was doing a dare to dance on the train before it came over, uh, and then I, it's like I called Justin and just to like mess with you before I die, I'm like Justin, Justin, remember that conversation. And like green smoke comes out. No. Are you? And then like at the end, like I'm like I inhale it and I'm like, no, get out, get out, get out, get out, out the gypsy curse. And then like uh, I'm talking to Bonnie and uh, I'm like, uh, listen, this is really awkward to bring up, but I think right before Brian died, he put a gypsy curse on me, so I can't kill myself and I have to live. In perpetual agony, <laughs> yes. and then and then she's like, um, "Wait, how did he do that?" And I'm like, "Well, he had green smoke come out of his fingers, and I inhaled it, and I didn't want to." And we talked about this before, and then she's like, "Oh no, he was just really into eating pistachios." He may have passed gas right before he died. <laughs> That's what happened. But I guess Bonnie's gonna, dude. Bonnie's gonna. Bonnie's gonna. She's gonna be in on the club, man. She'll be like, "Listen, sweetheart." If Justin ever comes to you talking about <laughs> talking about green gas, you just say that's what he did. You just agree with whatever exactly. bizarre scenario. No, she just goes all like Stephen King. She's like, Fina, <laughs> <laughs> Fina. <laughs> oh my I think God. this is a great place to wrap things up. Uh, yeah, let me just tell you, this was a fascinating Rorschach test. I really want to go back and figure out. What like like ten years from now, wherever we end up, we're gonna go yeah. back and listen to this moment and be like, we just predicted our future. Brian got hit by <laughs> that by that piano, and Justin fell in love with a chick from Glee. All right, wait, how, how <laughs> wait, this is a terrible the outcome the for this whole curse. thing. All right, is, is it the gypsy curse where I can't die and I bang the hot? Chicken yeah, but blade? you know what? She freaking tortures you and she mocks uh, you. She, while she's having sex, she's just like, oh, you were so great with Brian Brushwood. That's oh, nonstop. Man.
I so wouldn't care. <laughs> I mean, it's so a trade-off I would make now. <laughs> all right, all right. Look, Brian let's... carries the show. You're damn right. <laughs> yeah, like uh, the spirit of Brian. Uh, so, so there we go, folks. I hope you've enjoyed our our kind of acoustic uh, edition. You know what we should call this episode? What? Phoning it in. Phoning it in. We, folks. We're, well, I hope you enjoyed the fact that this week we phoned it in for you. Ring a ding, 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 dong is what I have to say. To Until that. next time, I'm Brian Brushwood. You can follow me at Schwood at uh, uh, on the interwebs. That's me, Brian Brushwood, and Justin Robert Young. I'm uh, Justin Robert Young. You can follow me at Justin R Young, all up in those twitters. And uh, y- you know, we have a bunch of really fun stuff, including the Weird Things podcast that I do with Brian and uh, and our friend Andrew Main. And uh, I check out. Tell you what, itrix.com, you want to know what? This is something that you don't even know, Brian. I don't know. Um, you already available. I have an interview with uh, Jason Raff, the executive producer of America's Got Talent. What? Um, so check that out at itrix.com. America's Got Schadenfreude. They, it's a very interesting thing, especially when it comes to magic. Does it, very it's, interesting it's, is it a lot like this interview? Do you, no. do you go to much, no. many of the same places that we, we did touch on a lot of the same topics, including gypsy curses, and there is possibly a discussion of us hosting a podcast called Between the Sheets. <laughs> Until then, this is NSFW, the new show of when the new sauce for the Webernets. I love each and every one of you. Dying to fight. See you next Tuesday.